is question 10 of the 2017 Paper 1 A-Level paper. The question asks, contrast how an optical microscope and a transmission electron microscope work and contrast the limitations of their use when studying cells. Because this question asks for you to contrast, what we need to do is write opposing statements. Now, a lot of this was learned early on at A-level, and it was basically just um, remembering, so it's just recall. So what we need to do is make sure that we word our answers carefully. So we're going to say that a transmission electron microscope uses electrons, and an optical microscope uses light. The and in there is really important because that's what makes it a contrasting statement. TEM allows greater resolution. Now, we don't have to put the contrasting statement there because we've used the word greater, meaning more than. In the next one, we're going to say that because it's got greater resolution, smaller organelles can be observed. And we have to make sure that we're clear here. We can't just say that organelles can now be observed because, of course, large organelles with a light microscope can be observed, i.e. the nucleus. We can say that the TEM views only dead material and the optical microscope views live specimens. We say that the TEM, TEM does not use colour, but an optical microscope can. That the TEM requires thinner specimens. Again, because we've used thinner, that is a comparative word in itself. The TEM requires a more complex preparation. Again, the word more is a comparative word, so we don't have to now write about the optical microscope. And the TEM focuses using magnets and an optical microscope uses lenses. So fairly straightforward as long as we write contrasting statements or use contrasting words like greater, thinner, more and so on. So my top tip for this question is to remember that with an optical microscope, you can view organelles. They're just large organelles like the nucleus. The transmission electron microscope enables us to view smaller organelles like the mitochondria. And remember that the TEM doesn't do 3D images. That's the scanning electron microscope. Okay, looking at the next part of the question, it says figure six shows an image from an opt optical microscope of meiosis occurring in a flower bud of a flowering plant. W and Z are undergoing meiosis. Now, just a few words about that. You'll remember from GCSE that uh, in flowering plants, chromosomes come in pairs. In non-flowering plants, they don't. An example of a non-flowering plant would be like a fir tree. Back to the question, it asks you to explain the appearance of W and Z. And looking at the light optical microscope image that we've got there, we can see that W is a cluster of four cells and Z is a cluster of two. So in essence, what this question is asking us isn't to describe those clusters, but to explain them. In other words, the question may as well be asking or testing what are the outcomes of the first meiotic division and the second meiotic division, remembering that meiosis is a two-stage process and the first stage produces two cells and the second stage produces four. So the first thing we're going to say is that W has four cells as it's at the end of its second division of meiosis remembering that one cell undergoing meiosis actually produces four daughter cells. And this is because although during meiosis, which is a reduction division, the genetic material, in other words the DNA, doubles before the first division takes place. So we need two divisions to actually take place in order to end up with half the amount of chromosomes. So by saying that we know that W shows haploid cells, i.e. N chromosomes, we're saying that it's undergone reduction division because a normal cell would contain two N chromosomes. That brings us on to our third mark because W now contains half the mass of DNA of the cells in Z. And if you read the examiner's report, it actually tells you to be specific and to talk about the mass of DNA and not about the mass of genetic material. And the only thing left to say is that Z has two cells because it's at the end of its first meiotic division. 
Now, according to the examiner's report, a lot of students lost marks here. They started referring to 23 pairs of chromosomes, for example, and forgetting that we were actually looking at plant cells. My top tip here is to go back and read the stem of the question and stick to it. Next bit of the question looks like a lot of reading, but there are five marks. An environmental scientist investigated a possible relationship between air pollution and the size of seeds produced by one species of tree. He was provided with a very large number of seeds collected from a population of trees in the centre of a city and also a very large number of seeds collected from a population of trees in the countryside. Describe how he should collect and process data from these seeds to investigate whether there is a difference in seed size between the two populations of trees. So it's already told us that we've got a very large number of seeds and we can't check them all because that would take too much time. So the first thing we need to say is to use a random sample of seeds from each population. And at this point, you can talk about how you would generate a random sample. And the second thing we need to say is that the sample should be large enough to be representative of the whole population. And one way you can do this is by finding the running mean and making sure that it's settled down and it doesn't change and then you know that your sample is representative. You need to then give an indication of what you are actually going to measure to compare the seeds. Is it going to be mass? Is it going to be seed length? Then when you've measured that, you're going to talk about calculating a mean. We're not calculating an average because remember there are three types of average. We're calculating a mean and then we're going to use standard deviation for each population to see if there is an overlap. Suggesting that there isn't an overlap and that there might be a difference, we would then go on to the student's t-test to find out. From the t-test we would analyse if there was a significant difference between the two means of the two populations and that can only be done following the statistical test not from just the standard deviation. My top tip for this question would be to recognise that we can only use the word significant following a statistical test that is not the standard deviation. Once again I hope you found the video useful please do leave me a comment.